you have questions about Medicare and coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, and any of the other names that it goes by, and we're going to address some of them today. Hey, this is Bob Vineyard, your Medicare expert with the Georgia Medicare Minute. I know if you're like me and everybody else, it seems like everywhere you look, there's somebody talking about COVID and talking about, um, you know, all of the bad stuff out there and you're just getting tired of it. It's kind of like a car wreck. You don't want to look, but you just can't help it. You just got to look. So what I'm going to do today is uh, address some of the issues and, and give you some information that I have read recently about uh, the COVID-19 virus. And also we'll talk a little bit about, um, about how Medicare handles COVID-19, both from a testing standpoint and also from a treatment perspective. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, I'm going to start off with, and by the way, I'll be linking to uh, I'll be linking to some articles and so forth, and uh, as well as uh, another video I'm going to reference on telehealth. So I'll be linking to that in the description below. So let's get started on this. Um, yesterday, this morning actually, I read an article in the Washington Post. Um, and I don't get uh, compensated for that plug, so I don't think that I'm mentioning specifically for that reason. But I read an article in the Washington Post this morning that was rather eye-opening, uh, and, and it, it um, repeated a lot of stuff that I have read and heard from other sources, but it also introduced some new ones, and it talked specifically, this article was specifically about a side effect or a co-effect, however you want to call it, that is uh, apparently related to the COVID-19. We all know about how it impacts our lungs, and there's a rather graphic uh, CT scan video in this, and a, a doctor is talking about how the CT scan showed the kind of damage that he would see on somebody who has tested uh, positive for COVID-19, but I think he said has not yet uh, exhibited any symptoms. So it's, it's kind of frightening. Uh, a lot of information coming out about how COVID-19 uh, is, uh, a lot of people are testing positive for it, but they're asymptomatic. Uh, however, it doesn't mean that you know everything's fine because they can then pass it on to other people. But this Washington Post article talks about blood clotting and how they're discovering, and it, it really kind of turned up in some doctor's notes, not only here, but also in Italy and perhaps uh, another country or so. Uh, blood clotting is something that is kind of like, well, maybe we need to look at this a little bit differently. And we know about the respiratory distress, but maybe we need to also start uh, administering for somebody who comes through the ER and tests positive for COVID, uh, maybe we need to start administering uh, anticoagulant uh, medications. Yeah, I think that's the right word, blood thinner, basically. Maybe we need to start doing that because some patients are going into distress associated not so much with the respiratory effects but uh, from from the uh, from the blood clots they even reference an, an actor I think in New York 34 years old had to have a leg amputated because of blood clots affiliated with associated with COVID-19 so <laughs> this is kind of like every you know just when you think it's it's bad it comes along and it gets worse I mean it's one of those things but we're going to talk, uh, the article talks about that, and again, I'm going to link to it uh, in the description below. Another thing that was brought up was the reference to a couple of women uh, who were pregnant and how pregnant women are having problems associated with the COVID-19. just so happens the two ladies that were referenced in this article were both undergoing C-section and they developed complications. One of them, blood pressure spiked. The other one, uh, I can't even remember what it was, maybe excessive bleeding. I don't know what it was, but you can, you can read the article. But um, 
of course, we know that people who are, it, this impacts more than just, quote, the elderly. Um, this impacts a lot of younger people as well, but it's, it's predominantly, um, predominantly seniors. And also the list of comorbidities are <laughs> expanding on almost a daily basis. Uh, originally they said it's the elderly and then they said well it's the elderly who and, and also people who are obese and then they threw in diabetes and then they threw in uh, if you have compromised immune systems and then <laughs> since then it's kind of well if you have high blood pressure then uh, you're more susceptible to, to COVID and now apparently if you're pregnant uh, and which makes me wonder uh, does that mean that you should be tested if you're going to have any kind of electric sur elective surgery? Does that mean you should be tested to make sure that you're not going to suddenly develop other symptoms? I don't think it has anything to do. They just cited two women who were having C-sections. I don't think it has anything specifically to do with somebody who's pregnant, but since it mentions C-sections, um, it makes me wonder about elective surgery, but I'm not a doctor and I'm not pronouncing anything on this. But I will link to that article. I find that it's it's very interesting and it kind of it helps you to be informed. You don't have to read if you don't want to, um, but I I think that in situations like this we do need to uh, we need to be in, be informed rather than just kind of Pollyannish and saying oh well you know if it happens it happens or whatever. Um, <clears throat> all right, Medicare and COVID-19. Medicare will pay for COVID-19 testing if you are symptomatic. If you're not symptomatic, they won't pay for it. Uh, don't know how expensive the test is, but quite honestly, if you think it's one of those things that um, you need to be tested for and your doctor agrees, then, you know, uh, go for it. But, uh, you know, the, the, the scary thing about this is the high percentage of people who test positive, and these, these are just random samples, uh, people on the street kind of thing, and, uh, or, you know, the, the clinic says, hey, we're going to offer uh, COVID testing. You know, why don't you come by here and we're, we're doing a, a random study. But the interesting thing is the high percentage of people that are testing positive for COVID anywhere from 50 to 80 percent and are not symptomatic. So does that mean that they will eventually develop the illness? Does it mean that uh, their body was able to fight it off and they're not going to have any residual? I don't know and nobody knows. Uh, what we do know is that people who are asymptomatic can also infect other people. Uh, there was a Navy ship, maybe there was more than one, but there was a Navy ship recently in the news and, um, you know, uh, several so sailors came down with, uh, they, were, they were definitely symptomatic and I don't remember the exact number, but you can look it up uh, if you want to. But the interesting thing was the high number, high percentage of sailors that tested positive for COVID, but were asymptomatic. So, I mean, this thing is pretty scary. Uh, it's, uh, and I was a little bit dismissive at first, to be quite honest, because I thought, well, gosh, the regular flu is, is, uh, is deadly, and there, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70,000 people in the U.S. die from regular flu every year. Why are we so concerned about this? And I still have, uh, that skepticism, if you want to call it, but uh, and I don't know that this uh, this COVID nineteen is any more uh, contagious than than anything else. I don't know. You can draw your own conclusion, but uh, I know I'm taking precautions uh, when I go out on uh, for essential business, like getting groceries. I haven't been to the gas station in probably three weeks, but. Um, uh, I know when I go out for essential things like, like groceries and so forth, I do wear a mask and uh, it's not one of the N95 masks. It's a, it's a, uh, 
it's a cloth ma mask. I ordered some online and I put a uh, an exam mask, paper exam mask in a little pocket in there. So I've got kind of double protection. I don't know that it's going to protect me all that much, but it's better than nothing. And I will be wearing a mask for the foreseeable future. Who knows? Maybe I'll be wearing, maybe all of us will be wearing masks for the rest of our lives. We, we just don't know about this. But the COVID-19 um, and, and Medicare, Medicare does pay for testing if you're symptomatic. It will obviously pay for any treatment as well. So, you know, that's the good news. And um, the, the telehealth. Now, I did a, I did a video a few weeks ago on, on telehealth in Medicare. Medicare also covers telehealth, uh, telemedicine, where basically you're FaceTiming your doctor. And coincidentally enough, about a week or so after I did that video, I had my own telehealth conference with my doctor, and it was a follow-up to my, uh, my annual exam from six months ago. And she just wanted to check on me and make sure I was okay. And of course, anticipating the telehealth conference, I went ahead, I weighed that morning, I weigh every morning anyway, but I weighed that morning, checked my blood pressure, which I normally do about twice a week. Um, I did not anticipate asking about drinking. So I said, well, you know, I'm drinking a little more than normal, but you know, uh, normally just a, a weekend drinker, but now eh, I'm have pretty much having a glass of wine every night with with my meal so that is that's my confession if you will but uh, this video will appear in the next newsletter if you're not receiving the newsletter and would like to uh, just drop me a line uh, call me email me and say hey I want to or make a comment on on YouTube when this video shows up and I'll be glad to put you on the list keep in mind that this newsletter is not a uh, I guess you would call it a typical salesy type newsletter. It's more informative. Uh, but of course, anytime that you've got questions, you know where to reach me. This is Bob Vineyard, your Medicare expert with the Georgia Medicare Minute. You take care and have a great day and stay safe.